Sage is going to get is her chemise. Now her chemise is her slip, it's her nightgown, it's the most comfortable item in her wardrobe. And it's pretty, because we're girls, we like pretty, right? We do. And then she's going to have her pantaloons, and she doesn't have to put these on. These are her pantaloons, but they're a little bit air conditioned. <laughs> So when you get everything on, you'll kind of see why they might need to be that way. <laughs> but what's life without a good foundation? So she's going to get a corset. Now, boys and girls got a corset when they were born. And I'll show that to you. It was called a belly baby. <laughs> And now, uh, this is bragging rights for you. Finally, it took me all these years to control her. So, now, it's, it's loose, I can't make it tight enough. But can you bend over and pick something up off the ground? Not very easy. Well, I have what's called a working corset on. And... The working corset, my range of motion is like this. I can pick stuff off, off the ground, but it's not real pretty. <laughs> but you don't want anyone to know that you're wearing a corset, so we're going to use a corset cover or shim a set, and that's going to cover up the lines of her corset. And again, it's pretty, because we like pretty. I did the and I ended up paying the tag. Right. Then, so, who can cipher? Can you cipher? Can you count? <laughs> so, she has her pantaloons, her chemise, her corset, and her corset cover or chemise set. Then we're going to put on petticoats. And everything got blown around, so it's all kitty cats. So we're going to put one petticoat on, but we're going to say that it's really three petticoats. So now we're at what? Seven. Seven. Okay. And then we're going to put on another three petticoats. So, and if you have questions, think about the pantaloons. You want to make sure that something, if she would fall down, something would be around her legs to preserve her modesty. <laughs> so now we're at what? Ten. Then she gets a hoop. The hoop is the height of fashion. And we want to be fashionable. So before the hoop, there was something called a caged crinoline, and it was like a big Victorian bird cage that was made of iron. Oh boy! Yeah, you put it on, you opened the door, stepped inside it, clamped it shut. There were braces or suspenders that went up over your shoulders to hold it up because it weighed about 35 pounds. Then Queen Victoria had a lady-in-waiting that brought her a hoop from France. And it was wonderful. It moved. In the South, homes that were built during the 1850s when the caged crinoline was popular, hallways and doorways were six to eight feet wide. That was so a lady and her escort could walk through at the same time. Now they just fill them up with furniture. So she's got 11 now. Then we're going to put on another three petticoats. Another three? Uh-huh, because these are going to be pretty. So this one just has a ruffle at the bottom. We'll fix it. The next one will have two ruffles. And the third one will maybe be all lace or all really pretty because some of our fabric is so thin that you could read through it. 
and you want to make sure that whatever shows through your fabric is going to be beautiful. Now, she's got 14 layers. Gentlemen, avert your eyes. She's totally indecent. This is all her underwear. <laughs> So I'll underwear. get her dressed <laughs> and talk about laundry. Now your underwear, all this white, is washed every week. You wash on Monday and you iron on Tuesday and you iron all day long because it all has to be ironed and starched. Your outerwear, yeah. <laughs> your pretty fabric, is washed maybe once or twice a year because we're washing in boiling water, lye soap, bluing to make things bright and white. And what's going to happen to my pretty fabric if I wash it in boiling water? If it's wool? Yeah. Or just disappear. And so her outerwear is washed once or twice a year. And before you think that she's stinky, there are many accounts of soldiers that went the entire four years of the conflict and did not wash their clothing or take a bath once. The closest they got to a bath was if they crossed a river and happened to fall in. <laughs> now there were gentlemen in the army that were very meticulous about their person that took a bath often. They were thought to be crazy because they were inviting death and disease by bathing too often. So, you know, usually they were more well-to-do gentlemen. Mm -hmm. If I get these out of the way. Mm -hmm. Let's get you all fixed. Okay, if we can part the Red Sea, we're going to have her go out and walk around a little bit. See what it feels like to walk in it. She's just swaying. <coughs> She's very pretty. Yeah. And then you can come back in and we'll have to sit down. Yeah, take pictures, Mom. <laughs> and you just turn around and sit. And see, she's sitting very straight and proper. The highest compliment a man could say of his wife is, my wife is straight-laced and uptight. <laughs> that means she was a proper lady, she would never embarrass him in public, and she was always very well corseted. Stand up, and so, we'll take it all off. At what point with all this pretty does the heat build up? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, with 15 we, layers. We've worn this when it was 105 degrees. Yeah. We're not any hotter than anyone else. Really? Because we may sit with our hip, with our feet in a tub of cool water. We may wash our hair. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of things you can do to get cool, but you're really, it's all cotton. cotton so it's, it's all mm -hmm. breathable. Even if you're wearing wool, it's very breathable. It's a natural fabric. So even in the deep south, when it's 105 and the humidity is 105, you're it's wearing okay. much thinner layers. They might be silk. Okay. They might be gauze, petticoats. Mm -hmm. They're going to be very thin and airy, but they breathe. Yeah. Hi, I'm sorry. Did you miss me? Yes, we did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you can talk about uh, loose women. Oh, I'd we love to talk about corsets and loose women and such things. <laughs> so she, uh, okay, you said that about the... Here. You told them about the... Um, Straight laced and uptight. Straight laced and uptight. Okay. So, oh, and she sat down, I'm sure, and sister said, it's hard to cross your legs. No, I didn't she say didn't. Try oh, to cross your legs. She didn't, well, good, because oh. that's not proper. Okay, step out. <laughs> and uh, so I, this is always fun. So I will explain why. So because, now remember, I'm right now, I'm straight laced and uptight. I'm very proper. I'd never be an embarrassment to my husband. It's all good. But if I, just give me a minute, it takes me a minute. <laughs> How proper do I look? <laughs> <laughs> so you she just looks like it's fun. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's very uncomfortable. <laughs> well, yeah, that too. But it also looks a little improper. But um, so the women, term, a loose woman came out of this time. So without a corset, 
you're a lo loose woman. And a loose woman would probably have a questionable, shall we say, reputation. Thank you. Um, a soiled dove, a daughter of Eve, a women of ill repute. Some of those, you know, like loose women, we, you hear that even now, you'll hear, oh, well, she's a loose woman. Well, that's because back in the 1860s, she wouldn't have a corset on. But when she went outside, in the public, in the public eye, she would be dressed just, just like as us. just as we are, because she would want to be proper. She would want to fit into society, no matter what circum. She wanted to be respected. Now, if and she was, if she should be fortunate enough to have a gentleman want to marry her, she wanted to fit in with his family and not be ostracized. You know what she used to? No, they don't want that. So she wanted to be proper. Now, she might be walking downtown, and she might stick her toe out from underneath her dress, and she might have red boots on or red shoes. That was a signal. And she might pass a gentleman, and she might, or he might be passing her, and she might put her foot out with that little red toe sticking out, and he might go, oh, and he might all of a sudden be following her. <laughs> um, because they did not want to stay in that situation. No. They wanted to be accepted into society and be proper. But you got to think about, at the time, a woman that was widowed she or a daughter who's lost her whole family either to the war or illness or something and she's on her own how is she going to support herself how That's, is she going to support her children if but if she does if she's been married and had children how's she going to support herself a woman she'd get maybe 17 cents a shirt if she was making a shirt for somebody and if she had to live in a boarding house it's 86 cents a week you get one meal. It does not pay for the coal for the fire to keep you warm. It doesn't pay for lamp oil so that you can sew a shirt longer. So you're working from sun up to sundown, trying to make enough shirts to get 86 cents a week. And you're hand sewing and it takes you three days to make a shirt. It's, it's, it's hard. It's a hard thing to do. Um, Life was not easy. No. Um, any questions? I'm not sure where you all came with this. Well, we didn't talk about babies. Oh, we didn't talk. We about can go babies? backwards and talk oh, about babies. Oh, we talk about babies. So babies, when they were born, baby boys and baby girls would get their first corset. It was called a belly band, mm -hmm. and the little belly button it has to heal. So Mama would take a silver coin. And she'd put it on the belly button for two reasons. One is silver has a natural healing property to it. And two is a little superstitious. Maybe if we put silver on their belly, they'll grow up to have some money. <laughs> it never worked. So and then after that, then little girl, little boys, as soon as it's all healed up, they'd lose this. They wouldn't have to wear it anymore. But little girls, when even when they were little toddlers, they'd wear a corset. It was it had rolls of cotton, very soft on the side. Of course, they wouldn't tie it tight, but it was like what you all would call a training bra. It got them used to the idea of having the corset on because when puberty hits, hits and everything goes cattywampus, you gotta have a corset on. So it just got them kind of in training. So. What else you want me to talk about? Oh, little boys. Okay, so then you got your little boys and boys and girls. Did you talk about this part? Okay, we go go back here. I didn't. I came late to the show. I'm so sorry. But um, so babies wore dresses. Little boys would wear a dress till they were mm, three, four, five. However, they whenever they got potty trained and they had good finger dexterity, because we mamas. If you, you've all, you've probably been around babies. You know, babies is messy, right? You gotta clean them up. And it's easier to pull up than it is to pull down. At least it always was with my kids. And so, before you could get 
out of boys before they could get out of their little dress there were buttons around their little knickers that they would wear when they got bigger and to be able to unbutton those when they gotta go to the bathroom and they're doing the happy dance they can't get their fingers working well enough then you got problems so you want to so there's be, on the give me the so on the baby's clothes there's buttons around the leg that button his stockings into his pants there's buttons around the waist that button his shirt into his pants and there's braces to keep him up so that's a lot of buttons to undo while they're doing that happy dance so <laughs> yeah. pretty much five years old then they get into knickers but and if you think the all these pictures here are you know little children a, a little post civil war but about the time period close to it and there's only one girl in all these pictures. They're all wearing dresses. They're all wearing dresses. And some of them are quite frilly. But the way, and you can't look on the back and go, oh, well, that's Grandpa. What you have to do is you have to look where their hair is parted. Because boys would part on either side and girls would be straight down the middle. And that's how you can tell if you go home. Because they didn't write on the pictures any better than y'all do you know you look at it and go which kid is that <laughs> you know and then you go, oh, oh it, it, that's that's joe i gave him that outfit yeah so you know you that's how you tell it and then you can narrow it down after that when you get the family pictures <laughs> okay my kids have questions. any questions no? No? Well, thank you for sharing all that. Oh, all right. absolutely. Thanks for and dressing up my daughter. Thank yeah. you for which one who got you got dressed Sage. up. I didn't get to see in time. So anyway, <laughs> thank you for helping. Appreciate yeah, thank it. You. Thank you. So, anyway. enjoy your guys' weekend. Oh, we will. Oh, we will. All right. As long as we don't fly away, we'll be right. fine. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you. Y'all